Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into a topic that is super relevant to pretty much anyone who's ever worked in a team. Conflict mediation techniques. Yep, those magical skills that can turn a workplace war zone into a peaceful, productive environment. And we are talking about those awkward, stressful moments when you wish you could just teleport to a deserted island. But fear not, because today I'm about to equip you with the top conflict mediation techniques to shut down conflict at work like a pro. If you're ready, let's get into it. Why is this even important, you ask? Well, let's face it, conflicts are inevitable. We're all human with different perspectives, opinions, and sometimes even clashing personalities. But those conflicts don't have to derail your team or tank your productivity. With the right mediation techniques, you can actually turn those conflicts into opportunities for growth and stronger relationships. Unresolved conflicts can tank productivity, morale, and even lead to people quitting. And no one wants to be the reason someone else starts a job hunt. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Here are nine essential conflict mediation techniques that you absolutely need to master. Number one, active listening. You've heard this a million times, but let me tell you, it's because it works. When you actively listen, you're not just hearing words, you're understanding emotions, intentions, and underlying issues. Here's how to nail it. Eye contact. Look them in the eye, but don't go all laser vision on them. Nodding. Show that you're following along. Nod, but not like a bobblehead, more like, you know, just being invested and engaged in the conversation, okay? Reflecting. Repeat back what you heard. So, you're saying the project timeline is stressing you out? Why does this work? Well, it shows empathy and it makes the other person feel heard which can diffuse a lot of tension right off the bat. This is not just about hearing the words coming out of someone's mouth. It's about truly understanding their perspective, their concerns, and their emotions. It's about paying attention to their body language, their tone of voice, and what they're not saying. Think of it like this. You're not just a passive observer. You're an active participant in the conversation. You're reflecting back what you hear, asking clarifying questions, and showing empathy. You're basically saying, hey, I hear you, I understand you, and I am here to help. Number two, stay neutral. Look, it's tempting to sometimes take sides, especially if you have a favorite coworker. We all do, admit it. But staying neutral is key. Here's how you do it. First, avoid blame. Focus on the issue, not on the person. Instead of saying things like, you always miss deadlines, try the deadlines have been an issue lately. Balanced language. Use we instead of you or I. How can we resolve this? Why does this work? Well, neutrality helps both parties feel like the situation is being handled fairly. Number three, set ground rules. Before diving into the heart of the issue, get some ground rules to keep things civil. Think of it as conflict mediation etiquette. One person talks at a time. No interrupting, no overlapping speech. Respect, no name calling or personal attacks. Time limits, each person gets a set amount of time to speak and say their piece. And why does this work? Well, it creates a structured environment where everyone knows what to expect, reducing the chance of a shouting match, which none of us really enjoy, do we? Number four, focus on interests, not positions. People often get stuck in their positions, like I need this report by Monday. Instead, focus on the underlying interests, such as I need this report to meet my deadline. Ask why. Why is this important to you? Find common ground. We both want this project to succeed. Why this works? Well, understanding interests helps find solutions that satisfy everyone's needs, not just their demands. 
Number five, brainstorm solutions together. Now that everyone's calm and collected and you understand the root of the conflict, brainstorm solutions together. Be open-minded, encourage all ideas, even the wild ones. Collaborate, build on each other's suggestions. Why does this work? Well, collaborative brainstorming fosters a sense of teamwork and shared responsibility in solving the issue. We are a team after all. Number six, agree on a plan of action. Once you've got some potential solutions, agree on a plan of action. Make sure it's clear who's doing what and by when. Be specific. John will provide the data by Thursday and Jane will compile the report by Friday. Follow up. Schedule a follow-up meeting to check on progress, why it works. Well, clear plans prevent misunderstandings and ensure accountability. Number seven, know when to bring a third party in. Sometimes despite your best efforts, the conflict is just too heated. Don't be afraid to bring in a mediator. Now, this could be HR, a manager, or an external mediator. Why it works? Well, a neutral third party can provide an unbiased perspective and facilitate a resolution. Number eight, reframing. This is where you get to put your creative communication skills to work. Reframing is all about shifting the perspective on the conflict. Instead of focusing on the negative emotions, blame, or accusations, you're looking for the common ground, the shared goals, and the underlying interests. For example, instead of saying, you're always so stubborn and difficult to work with, you could reframe it as, it seems like we have different approaches to this problem. Let's see if we can find a solution that works for both of us. See the difference? It's subtle, but it can make a world of difference. Nine, open-ended questioning. This is your secret power for getting to the heart of the matter. Forget about those yes or no questions. We're going for the deep dive. Open-ended questions invite people to share their thoughts, their feelings, and perspectives in more detail. Think of questions like, what are your biggest concerns about this situation? Or what would a successful resolution look like to you? These questions not only help you gather information, but they also encourage dialogue, promote understanding, and even stimulate creative problem solving. And there you have it, the top conflict mediation techniques to shut down conflict at work. Remember, the goal isn't just to resolve the conflict, but to strengthen your working relationships and create a more harmonious work environment. Now, I know what you're thinking. This all sounds great and all, but does it actually work? Trust me, it does. When you master these nine techniques, you'll be amazed at how quickly you can diffuse tense situations, resolve conflicts, and build stronger relationships with your colleagues. But hey, we know that sometimes you need more than just tips. That's why we want to introduce you to Exploring Academy, our professional development platform. We'll help you refine those communication skills, boost your social fluency, and practice these mediation techniques in a safe, supportive environment. Why is this important? Well, strong communication skills aren't just about work. They're about building better relationships, achieving your goals, and living a more fulfilling life. At Exploring Academy, you'll get targeted practice in our small group coaching program and personalized feedback in live sessions. So head on over to academy.xlearning.co to learn more about our community and platform and take the first steps towards becoming a conflict resolution rock star. So go out there, my friends, practice these techniques, make them your own, and become the conflict mediation ninja that you were always meant to be. And hey, if you have any questions or you wanna share your own conflict mediation experiences, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, keep communicating, keep collaborating, and keep crushing it. If you found these strategies helpful, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more professional communication tips. And also follow our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. 
And if you have any conflict mediation stories or tips of your own, be sure to share them with us. We love hearing from you, like I said. All right, thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, keep exploring. Bye for now.